And, and by the early 1990s, would it be fair to call you or to characterize you as a real estate tycoon? Yeah. Um, T Trump Tower um, on Fifth Avenue, that was completed in 1983? Around that time, yes. And when did you move into the, uh, your penthouse apartment there? Maybe a year later. And that remained your primary residence until you were elected president, correct? That's right. And Trump Tower, where's Trump Tower located? I have seen up. 57th just and 5th. And at some point, uh, you became the owner of the Plaza Hotel in New York, correct? Yes. And where's the Plaza Hotel located? 59th off 5th Avenue. And um, for how long were you the owner withdrawn? During what years were you the owner of the Plaza Hotel? I don't know. The years, about five years. And do you know when it began, when you bought it? Uh, in the early, early 90s. Okay. Now, in the 80s and 90s, is it fair to say you had a, a busy social life? I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know what you, you'd have to define social life. I wouldn't say uh, that busy. I was working very hard, so I didn't have time to be too much onto the social calendar, but yeah. Well, let me, let me try to phrase it this way. In the evenings during that period, you went out quite a bit in New York City to benefits, galas, et cetera. A lot of charity events, yes, uh, but I don't think that much, no. So in, this, in the period um, in the 80s and 90s, we've already discussed, you would go to benefits and parties. Um, and is it fair to say that a lot of those parties, there would be a... Um, or benefits there would be kind of a photography line either at the beginning or throughout the event? Yes. And that people would take photographs like Getty images and then put them, right. put them out. And this is another Getty images printout. And is it fair to say that this document indicates that you were the Grand Marshal of the New York City Veterans Day Parade on over November 10, 1995 in New York City? Yes. Similarly true that during this same period you made appearances on television, correct? Yes. Um, Sitting here today, can you recall any inter TV interviews that you did that you remember? I did everything. When you say everything, give me some well, examples if I you can. Did, I did the late night shows. I did the uh, newscasts. I even did some of the political shows on Sunday, even though I wasn't really in politics as I am now. But they wanted me to do that, I, and I did that. Uh, they'd ask me to do them all the time. So I did quite a bit of television. I think you already answered this question, but just so the record is clear, did you watch the program Good Morning America from time to time in this period of the late 1980s through the mid-1990s? A little bit. Uh, did you appear on the Today Show during this period? Yes. Uh, same question, did you watch the Today Show during this period? A little bit. During this period, did you have any friends uh, in the television industry who worked in the television industry? Probably. I wasn't much involved at that point in the television industry, but I probably did. Anyone come to mind right now? Maybe Bob Wright. Who was Bob Wright? He was the head of NBC, I think, at that time. What about um, Roger Ailes? When did you become friends with Rod Roger Ailes? Later. Ailes? Approximately? During the, uh, more in the uh, seven, eight year ago period. Uh, what years were you married to um, your first wife, Ivana Trump? So, uh, about 78 to 78. the early 90s. Your, um, your next wife was a woman by the name of Marla Maple. Right. And, um, Sitting here today, do you recall what years you were married to Ms. Maples? Um, I'd have to get the exact dates for you. I can do that very easily. In the course of your dating life and your married life, did you have occasion uh, to buy gifts for women you were seeing? Not much, actually. Well, um... I mean, if it was a birthday or something, I guess, yeah. 
And other than birthday presents, did you buy gifts for women you were dating? I mean, it's possible, but I don't think very much, no. I take it you bought uh, gifts uh, for your wives for their birthdays? Yes, generally. And I take it you bought gifts for women you were dating? It's, you know, probable. At least in your first marriage, you were seeing women outside of your marriage while you were married, correct? I don't know. Well, you were very public about the fact that you were seeing Ms. Maples when you were still married to Ms. to Ivana Trump, no? No, I don't think I was public about it. Well, no. there were a lot, there were many, many articles about it at the time, correct? Yeah. No, I don't think I was public about it. But if, uh, uh, no, I don't think I was public about it at all. Yeah, isn't it true that you were seeing Ms. Maples before you were divorced from Ivana Trump? I don't know. It's, uh, it was toward the end of the marriage, uh, so I don't know, really. I, it could be a, there could be a lap over, but I don't really know. Did you ever have occasion to go uh, to the department store Bergdorf Goodman? Very rarely. When you say very rarely. Can you give me more detail? How rarely? I mean, I, almost, for me, almost never. I would very rarely go there. When you went there, what do you recall shopping for? I don't know. It's possible I, I was there, but I don't know that I ever shopped there for myself. Uh, so when you shopped there for yourself, to the extent you went there, you were shopping for others? I don't think I ever shopped for others. It's possible that uh, one or both of my wives shopped there a little bit, but. Uh, I don't remember ever buying something for myself at Bergdorf. Okay. I, I, rent, I went there very seldom, if, almost if ever. Then let's limit it to Bergdorf's. Bergdorf's uh, was pretty close to Trump Tower and very close to the Plaza Hotel, correct? That's right. I'm handing you a document uh, that's been marked as DJT 18. It bears the Bates Range. Carol 24378 through 24385. Do you have that in front of you? Yeah. Um, sitting here today, do you recognize this document? No. Um, I will represent to you that this is the excerpt from Ms. Carroll's book that was published in New York Magazine online, originally online, on June 21, 2019. Okay. Um, at any point in time, did you read this article? Excuse me? Did you ever read this article, this document? No, I don't believe I did. I'm sending you a book. It's marked as DJT19. It's a book by E. Jean Carroll. It says, What Do We Need Men For? And if you look at the publication date, It says, first edition, July 2019. Do you have that? Do you have yeah. the book in front of you? I'm um, sitting here today, sir. Have you ever read either this book in its entirety or any portion of this book? No, nope, never have. Never, okay. I've never seen the book, actually. Okay. You responded publicly to Ms. Carroll's allegations on the same day that the excerpt was published in New York Magazine, which was June 21, 2019, correct? I think so. Um, let's take a look at that. So what we've handed you as DJT20 is a blown up, for legibility purposes, version of a tweet uh, posted by a woman by the name of Laura Litvin at 5.17 p.m. on June 21st, 2019. Do you have that in front of you? Yes. The statement that is in this tweet, is this a statement that you gave? I mean, essentially, that's what I said, yeah. If you could read that statement into the record. It says, statement from President Donald J. Trump. Regarding the quote story, unquote, by E. Jean Carroll, claiming she once encountered me at Bergdorf Goodman 23 years ago, I've never met this person in my life. She is trying to sell a new book that should indicate her motivation. It should be sold in the fiction section. Shame on those who make up false stories of assault to try to get publicity for themselves or sell a book or carry out a political agenda 
like Julie Swetnick, who falsely accused Justice Brett Kavanaugh. It's just as bad for people to believe it, particularly when there is zero evidence. Worse still, for a dying publication to try to prop itself up by peddling fake news, it's an epidemic. Ms. Carroll and New York Magazine, colon, no pictures, no surveillance, no videos, no reports, no sales attendance around, question mark, question mark. I would like to thank Berdorf Goodman for confirming they have no video footage of any such incident because it never happened. False accusations diminish the severity of real assault. All should condemn false accusations and, actual, and any actual assault in the strongest possible terms. If anyone has information that the Democratic Party is working with Ms. Carroll or New York Magazine, please notify us as soon as possible. The world should know what's really going on. It's a disgrace, and people should pay dearly for such false accusations. See, that, that's what you have in front of you? Yeah. And I think you've already confirmed that this is a statement that you gave uh, to someone on your staff to give to the press. Yeah. Let's mark as DJT21. A document bearing the Bates range. DJT21, this is the next one, right? DJ21, a document bearing the Bates range, MP1795. Through MP, I've got it, just put it together. Through MP1807. You have that in front of you? Yeah. And these are statements that were put out when you were President of the United States? Yeah. And if you look at the top, email, kind of the address of the email, it says under that, remarks by President Trump before Marine One departure. Yes. Marine One is a helicopter? Yes. Um, and if you look where it shows you speaking about halfway or two-thirds of the way down the document, it says, the very first thing you say, so we're going to Camp David. Yes. So am I correct in interpreting this as this is a statement you made um, while boarding or getting on to Marine One? Looks like it to go to Camp David? It looks like Okay. It. Let's go now to the third statement, which we're going to mark as this one I can do, DJ 222. Thanks. You have in front of you, sir, a document, um, five-page document. The first page says in, uh, in bold type, Exclusive, Trump vehemently denies E. Jean Carroll allegations, says she's not my type. Uh, it's from a publication known as The Hill. It's dated June 24, 2019, and it's attributed to uh, the gentleman Jordi Jordan Fabian and, or maybe not be gentlemen, by, it's attributed to two people, Jordan Fabian and Cigar and Genty. You see that? Yes. Um, So this is two days after the last statement we're looking at, which was on June 22nd. Um, do you recall having an interview with reporters from The Hill on June 24th, 2019? Vaguely, yes. And do you recall where that interview took place? I think it was in the Oval Office. And uh, you're quoted just below that paragraph as saying as follows, and this one I'll read. Um, I'll say it with great respect. Number one, she's not my type. Number two, it never happened. It never happened, okay? And then the reporters say, the president said, said while seated behind the resolute desk in the Oval Office. See that? Yes, I do. Um, and the statement that I just read that said, begins, I'll say it with great respect. Um, that was a statement that you made to the reporters for The Hill on June 24. 2019, correct? Yes. And same set of questions. Um, I take it, sir, that you stand by that statement today? Yes, I do. So before you made your statements that it never happened in 2019, did you or anyone on your staff reach out to anyone at Bergdorf Goodman? I didn't have to reach out to anybody because it didn't happen. Um, and, and by the way, if it did happen, it would have been reported within minutes. I'm talking about going to a major floor, probably, I assume, the most important floor, uh, a major floor in a major department store that's a very busy store, by the way, and 
checkout counters and everything else. And I would be in there. I mean, it's the most ridiculous, it's the most ridiculous, disgusting story. It was just made up. After you made um, the statements that you made in June of 2019, did you or anyone working for you reach out to Bergdorf Goodman? After the statement was made, no. In your June 21 statement that's marked as Exhibit 20, uh, you say, and this is the Litvin tweet, I, I never met this person in my life. Yes. Was that a true statement when you made it on June 21, 2019? It was a true statement when I made it. Uh, I think subsequently or at some point they showed a picture on a receiving. I was on a celebrity line for a charity. And I think I was either shaking her hand or her husband's hand on a receiving line. Like I say, shake a lot of hands with people, but I had no idea who she was. So at the, if I can understand your testimony, sir, you're saying that at the time you made the statement that's in DJT 20, um, you were not aware of ever having met Ms. Carroll. You have since seen a photograph that shows you with Ms. Carroll on a receiving line. Correct? Along with a lot of other Protection people. Form, yeah. This was a very public, uh, I think it was a charity or a celebrity event or something. And uh, I think that's her okay, so let's big claim to fame, you know, that she shook my hand at some celebrity event. So, so the answer to my question is yes, that after you made the statement, you were, became aware that there's a photo of you with Ms. Carroll in a receiving line, correct? At some point, okay. I saw there was a photo on a receiving line, yes. Okay, let's uh, mark the photo. What number are we at? To? What? We have in front of you a black and white photograph that we've marked as DJT23. And I'm going to ask you, is this the photo that you were just referring to? I think so, yes. Okay. And do you recall when you first saw this photo? At some point during the process, I saw it. That's, uh, I guess, her husband, John Johnson, who was an anchor for ABC. Nice guy. I thought, I mean, I don't know him, but I thought he was pretty good at what he did. Um, I don't even know who the woman, let's see, I don't know who, th it's Marla. You say Marla's in this photo? That's Marla, yeah. That's, that's my wife. Which wo woman are you pointing to? No. That's Here. Carol. Oh, is that, the oh, person okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene Carroll. Who is that? Who is this? Point. And the person, the woman on the right is your then wife, I don't Ivana? know. This was the picture. Ivana. I assume that's John Johnson. Is that that's Carol? Carol? Because it's very blurry. Now, in your June 21 statement, which is in your June 21 statement, which is DJT 20. You said that uh, Ms. Carroll was trying to sell a new book um, and that you said shame on those who make up false stories of assault to try to get publicity for themselves or sell a book. No. That's right. Uh, before you made that statement, did you have any knowledge, one way or the other, of the financial arrangements between Ms. Carroll and the publisher of her book? No. Did you even know who her publisher was? No. Had you ever seen her book contract? No. Um, did you know anything about Ms. Carroll's financial situation? No. Did you know anything about her uh, expected book sales? No idea. Before you made the statement that appears in DJT 20, do you know whether you or anyone working for you did any research on Ms. Carroll? I, I just don't know. It's possible somebody when, when they heard this horrible accusation, it's possible that somebody did a little quick research, but not that I know of.
Another thing that you say uh, in your June 21 statement is that uh, Ms. Carroll was trying to carry out a political agenda. Yeah. Before issuing your statement on June 21, did you have any, did you learn what political party Ms. Carroll, Ms. Carroll no, belonged to? I didn't know that. Um, before you issued your June 21 statement, did you have any documents indicating uh, that she was pursuing a political agenda? No. At the end of your statement, your June 21 statement, you say, if anyone has information that the Democratic Party is working with Ms. Carroll or New York Magazine, please notify us as soon as possible. Did anyone ever notif notify you I about don't that? know. Sitting here today, you can't recall anyone who notified you? I don't know, yeah. One of the other things that you said about Ms. Carroll at the time appears in your June 24 statement which is DJT 22. And what you said there is, I'll say it with great respect, number one, she's not my type. When you said that Ms. Carroll was not your type, you meant that she was not your type physically, right? Uh, I saw her in a picture. I didn't know what she looked like. Uh, and I said it and I, say it with as much respect as I can, but she is not my type. And again, when you say type, you just refer to looking at photos, so you mean physically she's not your type? Uh, physically she's not my type, and now that I've gotten indirectly to hear things about her, she wouldn't be my type in any way, shape, or form. But when you were talking back on June 24th, you were referring to her not being your type physically, I correct? saw a photo of her. Okay. And the only difference between me and other people is I'm honest. She's not my type. I take it the three women you've married are all your type? Yeah. What is True Social? It's a platform that's been opened by me uh, as an alternative to Twitter. And your handle on True Social is at real Donald Trump? I believe so, yes. Now, on October 12, just, just a few days ago, you issued a statement on True Social about Ms. Carroll in this case, correct? I believe so, yes. And um, the statement that you posted, who wrote that statement? I did. You yourself? Yeah. Um, did you post the statement yourself? Yes. Um, and in addition to posting the statement on True Social, you also sent it to the press. Yes, uh, it's called uh, Truth and Post. We post uh, much like, uh, how would you say it? We put out a statement and we also put it on Truth. Okay, let's look um, at the statement. Let's mark it as, what's my next number? 28. DJT 28. Okay, so this one. I can't read this. Well, we have a blown-up version. Let's mark it as 28 and 28A. Same guy. So what we have in front of you is DJT 28, sir, is the post as it appeared on True Social on October 12, 2022, and a blown-up version, because we appreciate the, the reading, the type is very small, a blown-up version that should be more legible. Do you have I both of those? I can see it, yeah. Okay. So it says, October 12th, 2022, statement by Donald J. Trump, 45th President of the United States of America. This quote, Ms. Bergdorf Goodman case, is a complete con job. And our legal system in this country, and, and our legal system in this country, but especially in New York State, just look at Peekaboo James, is a broken disgrace. You have to fight for years and spend a fortune in order to get your reputation back from liars, cheaters, and hacks. This decision is from the judge who was just overturned on my same case. I don't know this woman. 
have no idea who she is other than it seems she had a picture of me many years ago with her husband shaking my hand on a reception line at a celebrity charity event. She completely made up a story that I met her at the doors of this crowded New York City department store and within minutes swooned her. Swooned is in quotes. It is a hoax and a lie, just like all the other hoaxes that have been played on me for the past seven years. And while I'm not supposed to say it, I will. This woman is not my type, exclamation point. She has no idea what day, what week, what month, what year, or what decade this so-called event, in quotes, supposedly took place. The reason she doesn't know is because it never happened, and she doesn't want to get cut off with uh, caught up with details or facts that could be proven wrong. If you watch Anderson Cooper's interview with her, where she was promoting a really crummy book, you will see that it is a complete scam. She changed her story from beginning to end after the commercial break to suit the purposes of CNN and Andy Cooper. Our justice system is broken along with almost everything else in our country. Her lawyer is a political operative and Cuomo crony who goes around telling people that the way to beat Trump is to sue him all over the place. She is suing me on numerous frivolous cases just like this one and the court system does nothing to stop it. In the meantime, and for the record, E. Jean Carroll is not telling the truth, is a woman I had nothing to do with, didn't know, and would have no interest in knowing her if I ever had the chance. Now, I, now all I have to do is go through years more of legal nonsense in order to clear my name of her and her lawyer's phony attacks on me. This can only happen to, quote, in quotes, Trump, exclamation point. That, yeah. Did I read that correctly? Great statement. Yeah. True. Um, True. And now that you've heard it again and you have it in front of you, you're again confirmed that you wrote the whole thing yourself. I wrote it all myself. All myself. Did you t now, at the beginning of your post, the reference Ms. Bergdorf Goodman is a reference to Ms. Carroll, right? That's right. Now, when you say in here, I don't know this woman and have no idea who she, was, who she is, even though you're using the present tense, you're referring back to your knowledge as of when she first made the allegation. I still don't know this woman. I think she's a whack job. I have no idea. I don't know anything about this woman other than what I read in stories and what I hear. Uh, I, I, know, I know nothing about her. Okay, well, I guess the distinction I'm trying to make, sir, is that when the allegation came out in 2019, you said you, you I think it's your testimony, that you had no idea who she was. That's right. I still don't. Well, today you at least know that she's a plaintiff in a case suing you, correct? Oh, yes, that I know. Okay. But I know nothing about her. I think she's sick, mentally sick. Okay. Um, you say in this post, you use a strange word which I want to ask you about. You say she completely made up a story that I met her at the doors of this crowded New York City department store and within minutes swooned her. Do you see that? Yeah. What does swoon her mean? Uh, that would be a word, maybe accurate or not, having to do with uh, talking to her and talking to her to do an act that she said happened, which didn't happen. And it's a nicer word than the word that starts with an F. And this would be a word that I used because I thought it would be inappropriate to use the other word. Um, and it didn't happen. Okay, I, I was curious when I read this, so I looked up the word swoon in the dictionary, and it, under the dictionary it means to faint with extreme emotion. That's not what you meant here. Objection to form. Uh, well, sort of, that's what she said I did to her. She fainted with great emotion. She actually indicated that she loved it, okay? She loved it until commercial break. In fact, I think she said it was sexy, didn't she? It was very sexy to be raped. Didn't she say that? So, sir, I just want to confirm. It's your testimony that E. Jean Carroll said that she loved being sexually assaulted by you? Well, based on her interview with Anderson Cooper, I believe that's what took place. And you, we, can, we can define that. You'll have to show that. I'm sure you're going to show that. But she was interviewed by Anderson Cooper, and I think she said that rape was sexy which it's not, by the way. But I think she said that rape was sexy, and it was, she actually said things that were very strange, 
And then she was a different person after the — when he said, we'll take a break right now. We're going to take a break right now. He didn't like what she was saying. He was very upset with what. And then she came back, and she was a much different woman the second — in the second half, so to speak. And so the question I'm asking you is, did she say in that interview that she loved being sexually assaulted by well, you? Well, she said something to that effect. I mean, you'll have to take a look at the interview yourself. Uh, I believe she said rape was sexy, to which Anderson Cooper is dying. He's saying, let's get to a commercial break immediately. I think you better watch the interview. I'm sure you have, but you better watch the interview. In the interview, when Ms. Carroll talked about rape being sexy, isn't it true that she said that's a view that many other people hold? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. All I know is I believe she said rape is sexy or something to that effect. But you have to watch the interview. It's been a while. And just to clarify, you, I think you said a few minutes earlier that you used the word swooned as a synonym for, you said the F word, for sexual intercourse? Yeah. Okay. That's because that's what she said. What do you mean? She never used the word swooned. No. She, used, she said that I did something to her that never took place. There was no anything. I know nothing about this nut job. Okay. Then you go on to say in the statement, and while I am not supposed to say it, I will. Why were you not supposed to say it? Because it's not politically correct to say, read the next, go ahead, that she's not my type. Yeah, because it's not politically correct to say it, and I know that, but I'll say it anyway. She's accusing me of rape. A woman that I have no idea who she is. It came out of the blue. She's accusing me of rape, of raping her. The worst thing you can do, the worst charge, and, and you, know it's, you know it's not true, too. You're a political operative also. You're, dis you're a disgrace. But she's accusing me, and so are you, of rape. And it never took place. And I will tell you, I made that statement, and I said, well, it's politically incorrect. She's not my type. And that's 100 percent true. She's not my type. Now, in your true social statement on October 12, Um, you use the word hoax. Specifically, you say it is a hoax and a lie, just like all the other hoaxes that have been played on me for the past seven years. Do you see that? Yeah. Oh, recall making that statement. Um, and I take it what you're saying there is um, Ms. Carroll fabricated um, her claim that you sexually assaulted her, correct? Yes, totally. Okay. 100%. Now, fair to say, you'd agree with me, would you not, that you use the term hoax quite a lot? Yes, I do. Um, CNN reported that you used it more than 250 times in 2020. Does that sound right Could to you? Could be. I've had a lot of hoaxes played on me. This um, is one of them. And how, how would you define the word hoax? Uh, a fake story, a false story, a made-up story. Something that's not true. Something that's not true, yes. Um, sitting here today, can you recall what else you have referred to as a hoax? Sure. The Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. It's been proven to be a hoax. Uh, Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine hoax. The uh, Mueller situation for two and a half years hoax. Ended in no collusion. It was a whole big hoax. Uh, the Lying to the FISA court hoax, the lying to Congress many times hoax by all these people, this, this scum that we have in our country, lying to Congress hoax, the spying on my campaign hoax. They spied on my campaign, and now they admit it. Uh, that was another hoax, and I could get a whole list of them. And this is a hoax, too. This, when you say this and that? This, this ridiculous situation that we're doing right now. It's a big, fat hoax. She's a liar, and she's a sick person, in my opinion. Really sick. Something wrong with her. Okay. Um, in addition to the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, the Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine hoax, 
the Mueller, the Mueller or Mueller hoax, the lying to FISA hoax, the lying to Congress hoax, and the spying on your campaign hoax. Isn't it true that you also referred to the use of mail-in ballots as a hoax? Yeah, I do. Sure. I do. I and think they're very dishonest. Mail-in ballots, very dishonest. And isn't it true that you yourself have voted by mail? I do. I do. Sometimes I do. But I don't know what happens to it once, uh, once you give it. I have no idea. Are you familiar, I'm sure you are, with something that's often referred to as the Access Hollywood tape? Yes, I am. Okay, let's, play, let's mark it and play it as what, 35. You know, and she used to be great. She's still very beautiful. I moved on her, actually. You know, she was down in Palm Beach. I moved on her, and I failed. I'll admit it. Whoa. It, I, I did try and fuck her. She was married. <laughs> huge news there. No, no, Nancy. Yeah. No, this was... And I moved on her very heavily. In fact, I took her out furniture shopping. She wanted to get some furniture. I said, I'll show you where they have some nice furniture. <laughs> I took her out furniture. I moved on her like a bitch. But I couldn't get there. And she was married. And all of a sudden, I see her. She's now got the big phony tits and everything. She's totally changed her look. She's your girl's hot as shit. In the purple. Whoa! Whoa. Yes! Whoa! Whoa. Yes, the Donald is good. Whoa! <laughs> oh, my man! Just, wait, wait, you gotta look at me when you get out of here. Just remember, set this up. Just that is remember. very Will you give me the thumbs up? Look at you. You are a piece. You gotta put the thumbs up. You gotta okay. get the thumbs up. You can't be too happy. Can you first? Yeah, let me. It's very funny. You gotta give me the thumbs up. Uh, you and I will walk there. Maybe it's a different one. Better not be the post. No, it's, it's her. It's yeah, that's her, with the gold. I better use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. I can do anything. Oh, look at those legs. All I can see is the legs. No, it looks good. Come on, Shorty. Oh, nice legs, huh? Oof, get out of the way, honey. That's oh, good legs. Go ahead. It's always good if you don't fall out of the bus. Like Ford, Gerald Ford, remember? <laughs> Down below. Pull the hell. Hello, how are you? Hi. Mr. Trump, how nice are you? Nice seeing you. Terrific. Pleasure to meet you. Terrific. You know Billy Bush? Hello, how are you? nice to see you. How are you doing, Ariane? I'm doing very well, thank you. Are you ready to be a soap star? We're ready. Let's go. Make right. me a soap star. How about absolutely. a little hug for the Donnelly? You just got off the bus. Like okay, hug, absolutely. <laughs> Melania said hug this was bushy. okay. Got... That's you in that video, correct? Yes. Yes. And am I correct that that video was recorded um, in January? Withdrawn. Am I correct that that video was recorded in September 2005? I guess that would, I don't know the date, but whatever date it was is fine with me. And am I correct that you were engaged to your current wife sometime in 2004? I don't know. Am I correct that you married your cur current wife in January 2005? I don't know relative to that tape, no. And the person you were speaking to, it's now famous, in that video was Billy Bush? That's right. This is, very, this is very old news, fully litigated during debates, during everything else, fully litigated. Okay. And you know what I said then, and I say it now? Locker room talk. That was locker room talk. Okay. That's what goes on. And you did say in the video that you, quote, moved on her heavily, correct? Excuse me? You do say in the video that you, quote, yeah. moved on her heavily. Uh, I, I did say that, yes, okay. absolutely. And you do say in the video that as part of trying to have sex with this woman, you took her furniture shopping, correct? Uh, we actually did look for furniture, yes. So that was true. You actually Quick. took this woman in. I think so. I mean, it's shopping. been a long time ago. It's how long is that? A long time ago. But I think so. I do think so. Is that the only occasion when you took a woman shopping? I think so. And you say, and again, this has become very famous in this video, I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet, just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab them by the pussy. You can do anything. That's what you said, correct? Well, historically, that's true with stars. 
It's true with stars that, that they can grab women by the pussy? Well, that's what, it's, if you look over the last million years, I guess that's been largely true. Not always, but largely true. Unfortunately or fortunately. And you consider yourself uh, to be a star? I think you can say that, yeah. And now you said before, a couple of minutes ago, that this was just locker room talk. It's locker room talk. And so does that mean that you didn't really mean it? No, it's locker room talk. I don't know. It's just the way people talk. Okay. Now, are you familiar with a woman by the name of Natasha Stoinoff? No. Natasha. Stoinoff. You'll have to give me a little bit do of you a remember she wrote, Do you remember she wrote about you a lot when she worked at People Magazine? Oh, I, I do remember there was some woman that wrote, and then she, a long time later, I think she wrote a wonderful story, and then a long time later, as I remember it, a long time later she said that I was aggressive with her, but she wrote the most beautiful story and then all of a sudden, like, is it a year or two years later, she comes out with this phony story uh, that I was a great. I said, well, why would she have written such a good story for People magazine? She wrote a really nice piece. And then all of a sudden, like, uh, you know, years or months, many months later, she came up with this phony charge. Let's watch a video. And again, I apologize for the technology where you talk about Ms. Stoinoff's allegations. Are we marking this? Um, we're going to mark it. It's a, a clip of a video from a campaign event in West Palm Beach on October 13, 2016, and we're going to mark it as DJT 36. Then there was a writer from People Magazine who wrote a story on Melania and myself on our first anniversary. The story was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was lovely. But last night we hear that after 12 years, this took place 12 years ago, this story, a new claim that I made inappropriate advances during the interview to this writer. And I ask a very simple question. Why wasn't it part of the story that appeared 20 or 12 years ago? Why wasn't it part of the story? Why didn't they make it part of the story? I was one of the biggest stars on television with The Apprentice, and it would have been one of the biggest stories of the year. Think of it. She's doing this story on Melania, who's pregnant at the time, and Donald Trump, our one-year anniversary. And she said, I made inappropriate advances. And by the way, the area was a public area, people all over the place. Take a look. You take a look. Look at her. Look at her words. You tell me what you think. I don't think so. I don't think so. You'd agree with me that the person you were just talking about in that video was Natasha Stoinoff, correct? Yes. Okay. Are you familiar with a woman by the name of Jessica Leeds? No, I don't think so. But explain. Go ahead. Does that mean that this refreshed your recollection yes, of who Jessica Lee is? This woman made up a story, just like your client made it up. Just made up a story, having to do with sitting me in a, sitting next to me in an airplane. And uh, I mean, I'll have to read this again, but that story was so false also. But this was, I guess, making out as opposed to what your client said. This story was so false. This is a disgrace also. And do you recall speaking about Ms. Leeds allegations at campaign events in 2016? I might have. I thought it was so, like, like your client, I thought it was so ridiculous. Okay, let's take a look at the next video, which is DJT 38, correct? Hopefully our great movement, and there's never been anything like this in the United States, and the only way they figure they can slow it down is 
to come up with people that are willing to say, yeah. oh, I was with Donald Trump in 1980. Nothing changed. I was sitting with him on an airplane. And he went after me on the plane. Yeah, I'm going to go after. Believe me, she would not be my first choice, that I can tell you. Man. You don't know. That would not be my first choice. When you said in that video that Ms. Leeds would not be your first choice, you were referring to her physical looks, correct? Just the overall. Not, I, I look at her, I see her, I hear what she says, whatever. You wouldn't be a choice of mine either, to be honest with you. I hope you're not insulted. I would not, under any circumstances, have any interest in you. I'm, being, I'm honest when I say it. Uh, she, I would not have any interest in. The video we just watched, where you talked about Miss Leeds. What else did you know about Miss Leeds that would indicate to you that she was, would not have been your first choice, other than how she looked? I don't know. I think I probably saw her on television or something. Uh, but I don't want to be insulting. But when people accuse me of something, I think I have a right to be insulting because they're insulting me. They're doing the ultimate insult. They make up stories, and then I'm not allowed to speak my mind. No, I, I disagree with that. No, the, she would not have uh, been anywhere on a list. I just just wouldn't have been for me. No. It's disgusting. It's what she said was disgusting. Can you imagine doing that on an airplane, what she said? I'm doing that on an airplane. That's almost as ridiculous as doing it in Bergdorf Goodman in a dressing room. Isn't it true that just a few minutes ago you couldn't remember the date of your engagement to your current wife, Melania? No, no, no. We're talking about a different thing. We're talking about a woman where something happened that was inappropriate, right? Inappropriate. It was highly inappropriate. She would remember that date. Is I would imagine she would have complained to the airline. She would know the flight. She would know everything about it. She didn't even know the year, as I remember it, just like your client doesn't know the year, doesn't know anything about it. If something happened like that to your client, your client would know the second, should know down to the second, should know the day, the month, the year, right down to the second. In the last paragraph of the statement that you made on June 21 that appears in the Laura Litvin's week, EJT 20, you said as follows. Last paragraph where? Uh, of D, uh, DJT20. Um, Go ahead. What is it? You say as follows. The world should know what's really going on. It is a disgrace, and people should pay dearly for such false accusations. You see that? Yeah. And the person you meant who should pay dearly for such false accusations was E. Jean Carroll, correct? Yeah, and I think there are attorneys, too. I think the attorneys, like you, are... Uh, a big part of it, because you know it's a phony case. 